We do want to get you an update on the humanitarian crisis in the Horn of Africa. There has been a rise in threats and violence there, which makes life even more difficult for refugee families who are a part of this massive exodus from Somalia to camps in northwest Kenya. In August, I went there to visit the biggest refugee camp in the world. Many of the Somali families seeking safe haven in Kenya spend days trying to get to camps like this one in Dadaab. Do you feel relieved at all now that you and your family are here? He feels relieved because he arrived here alive with his family. Since the beginning of the year, more than 150,000 Somalis have gathered the last of their possessions while hoping their most precious ones would survive the journey. I think what I have seen here is the resilience of the human body and the capacity to take that kind of battering in terms of hunger and still be able to make it. I regard that as a miracle. Awaiting each refugee, food and supplies that guarantee at least a chance at a new life. It's about hope and they need to have hope because year after year of doing the same thing as you can imagine having to do this thing every two weeks to come and get your food. It's about dignity as well. Despite their plight, the children we met provided the most hope in this 50 square mile piece of the Kenyan desert that has been receiving refugees for nearly 20 years. In 1993, famine in Somalia and the ensuing battle in the country's capital of Mogadishu forced the first flood of people from their homeland into refugee camps across the Kenyan border. Then this year, another famine and fighting from the militant group Al-Shabaab sent refugees to Kenya at a rate of nearly 3,500 a week. We think that we're very close to the point where uh, the, the, the maximum population capacity of this area will be reached. On October 16th, the Kenyan military launched a unilateral attack on Al-Shabaab territory in Somalia. The Kenyan government claims that action has reduced the number of refugees crossing the border to just 100 people this week. Still, nearly half a million refugees remain in Kenya today, and it's required a large-scale humanitarian effort to provide relief. Right now, famine, war, and drought are killing a child every six minutes in the Horn of Africa. Dr. Jill Biden, the wife of the vice president, also visited the camps this summer. She's now joined with the American organization leading the effort to distribute food there to help raise awareness for the continued plight in the Horn of Africa. And joining us now, the wife of the vice president, Dr. Jill Biden. Last time we saw each other was under very different circumstances. We were in Dadaab, and it is, it's the kind of place that once you're there, it really never leaves you. No, that's true. Um, it made quite an impact on me uh, when I was there, but it made an impact before I went when I was watching all the coverage on the TV shows, and I just thought, you know, look at those mothers there with those children, and being a mother myself, I just thought, you know, I would want someone to help me, and I thought something has to be done. We have to do something more. And these women, these families, but, but you mentioned the women because it is so oftentimes the mothers go right. through so much just right. to get their children there and, and, and in their minds get them to a little bit of safety, to a place where they can have some security and some food every day. And yet even that place in Dadaab, the refugee camp, it is stretched to the limit. Um, and it is harder and harder for people to get there to receive that kind of help. What, what realistically can people in this country do? Well, we can uh, give a donation to help these mothers and children, no matter how small, even $10 will feed a mother and her family for three weeks, or $2 pays for immunizations for children. So even, I know times are tough here in America, but if we could just send just a little bit of money, I think it would make a major difference. You mentioned how tough times are. We're approaching the holiday season. For a lot of people, they're concerned about feeding their own families here at home, finding a job, maybe being able to have a Christmas yes. tree or a gift this year. There are things that you can do that don't involve giving money, as helpful as that may be. How else can people get involved? Well, I think that they can uh, make, create awareness, tell their friends, tell their neighbors, tell their church groups, their school groups, that maybe together they could maybe pull together a small sum of money. Or they might say to their child, you know, there is a, children are starving in Somalia mm -hmm. and Kenya. And if you would forgo maybe one of your Christmas gifts and give a gift of, it's really a gift of life to a child in a refugee camp. Is it hard sometimes, you think, to raise awareness for issues that are happening overseas in a place that is so foreign to so many of us here in this country um, and, and when we're struggling with our own things? You know, I definitely think it is hard uh, and because people in America are struggling today. 
but really the level of, um, of really desperation in the Horn of Africa. You know, when I was there, Erica, I heard of um, a mom who was walking days and days, and she had two children, and they were all so weak. And you know you have two little guys, and here she had two children, and she was just so weak that she knew she had to leave one along the road and just take one with her. So when a mother has to make that kind of a choice, I mean, it's unimaginable, I think. And they're the kind of choices, I hear it over and over again, that these mothers are having to make to feed their children and to get them to safety. It is, it is unthinkable, and you would never even want to have to deal with that situation. We should point out, too, some of the work that's being done. It's not just about sending money to give people food. USAID, I right. know, is involved with a number of mm -hmm. initiatives, CARE in the camps of Dadaab is as well, where they're actually teaching people uh, sustainable farming in the middle of a desert there in Kenya. Yeah, Feed the Future is doing a great job, USAID, is learning how to um, use new farming methods, new irrigation methods, for better crops, bigger vegetables. So things are being done, and they've already done that in Ethiopia and Kenya, so that's why the drought has not affected them as badly. But in Somalia, we just can't get in there because of the unstable political situation. Yeah, and because of Al-Shabaab, which keeps so much out. Yeah. Uh, speaking of politics, we do have to ask you quickly before we, before we let you go, your husband, the vice president, uh, saying over the weekend that he would be open to running for president in 2016. How would you feel about that? <laughs> Well, you know, I think you just have to take each day as it comes. I mean, look what happened the last election. You know, we ran against Barack. We lost. And, um, and then he was chosen vice president. So you never know what's going to happen. So you never say never. But... Um, you know, we'll just see what happens. Yeah. Going to be a busy, uh, busy year for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Well, we'll let you go because I know you're losing your voice. So we don't oh, want to take yeah. too much more of it because you are going to be very busy. Very nice to have you here in the studio with Thanks, us. Thanks, Erica. Thanks very much. Thank you.